Old Space Show will not be seen tonight, so that we may bring you the following special program. And happy 4K Blues to everybody. Um, wasn't planning on doing one this week, but Old Space Show got bumped, so I wanted to give you something uh, in exchange for that. It should be back next week. Who knows? Been a rocky couple weeks for me doing stuff, so I'm pretty happy with what I've been able to get out. Anyway, and I'm sorry that this is coming out late. I think I promised it yesterday, but I was waiting on a couple things to show up. Then one more thing didn't show up, but something else did that I wasn't expecting to come so early. But you know what? I got things. I got things. We'll hit up a 4K Blues Day. How's everybody doing? You doing good? I'm surviving myself. Doing all right. Doing all right. But hey, we move on. We go forward. So... I uh, hope you checked out this Monday's episode of Solid and Precinct 13 with Yancey Burns, who you hear on the commentaries. If you're on the podcast streams, uh, love his film knowledge, love talking movies with Yancey. Um, and I saw and Precinct 13 with one of my favorite directors, John Carpenter. No different. So check that one out. Next week, I got Jamie Alvey back, and we're going to be talking um, Let's Scare Jessica to Death. It's a cool little moody horror film from early 70s. You're going to like it. So let's get to 4K Blues Day. Um, got a bigger stack than expected this week. Hope you enjoy what is coming. And uh, hope you've been picking up some cool Blu-rays on your own. And share with me things that you've gotten recently. Um, let's start here. Where to begin? I got a lot of stuff. I think I know where I want to end. Let's start with uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. It's the uh, new Ghostbusters movie. Which piggybacks off the original two. Um, this is a movie a lot of people people are loving this new Ghostbusters movie. I wasn't too big on it myself. Uh, I did think the first like two thirds of the movie was a pretty fun fun kids adventure movie that they turned Ghostbusters in into. Um, but kind of hit a hit the brakes really hard in the final act, which I just wasn't my thing. Um, it's kind of interesting, but you know, hey, I am you who love this movie i personally i like the female ghostbusters one quite a bit and i know that's a point of controversy because ew girls but uh to me the ghostbusters um while one of my favorite movies and i love it uh and the sequel um to me always was always the next uh background for the comedy guys to play around in you know oh we just did stripes then we do caddyshack and then oh now we're fighting ghosts or we're in a horror movie or something so to me, it was that backdrop. I felt it was a, to me, it's a playground for comedic talent. And I think that's um, what the Paul Fag movie um, understood. But, you know, this one was mythology lore, like all this legendary stuff. That's where they wanted to go. Um, but yeah, new Ghostbusters. Uh, people are going to pick this one up like hotcakes, I imagine. I got the standard Blu-ray one. Um, I did not get the sent the 4K one. But I'll, I'll upgrade it as soon as it goes down in price. Uh, probably pick it up for like 10 bucks. But uh, Next, I got one of my favorite films of 2021. It's Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho. It's a really cool one. Uh, great performances by Anya Taylor-Joy, Thomas and McKenzie, Matt Smith. Um, all very good. This movie has so much awesome style, mood, um, Intrigue, mystery, Mr. X, uh, the late Diana Rigg and her final performance representing, representing. Um, it's a two disc set. I haven't got a chance to pop this one in yet. Um, I bought this one, I didn't get it for review. Um, but I, I really love this movie as a fan of like Argento, Fulci, uh, Sergio Martino, and all, all those guys. Like the, their styles used here, it's not really a there's some Jalo elements and stuff, but really Wright does his own thing with it. There's a lot of cool camera effects with mirrors in this that are just awesome to watch. So if you love good filmmaking, you love stylistic horror movies, Last Night in Soho is awesome. Check it out. Uh, next up, I got a fun little one from Paramount. It is Wayne's World. It's a 30th anniversary edition. Steelbook, which that's pretty much the end of the <laughs> anniversary edition it's the same disc they've been selling you for years and years and years no upgrade no 4k maybe this is the last time before they move to a 4k it's Penelope Spheres' film 
this is what you get. You get this steel book. I funny enough, as this is one of my favorite comedies. It's my probably my favorite SNL movie, sketch turned movie. And I, I've never upgraded my DVD. So I requested it for review to showcase the packaging here. It comes with the digital copy. And here you go. Same disc, new packaging, Wayne's World. So I guess if you want a cool uh, package and you don't own it already on Blu-ray, here you are. So you're like me. All right, next up from Scream Factory, I have Paranoiac. This is the latest in the upgrades of the Universal 8 film horror collection set, which I have done a video on hammer horror stuff. Uh, if you go back, it was one of my not so popular videos. Um, but although, hey, those of you who checked out my Doctor Who animated one, I was very happy with uh, the results of that. So thank you very much. I, have, I don't cater these much because of my hammer one doing so bad, but here we are. Paranoia gets an upgrade. It gets a 2K scan. It gets bonus features added to it. They didn't screw up the aspect ratio of this one in the other set. Um, reversible cover, of course. Kim Newman's here. They've got another historian to talk about things. And uh, they have a making of from, uh, I believe it was one of the UK releases. So, and a new commentary. This one is a like a psycho knockoff. And it's very interesting. Very cool. Uh, I like Oliver Reed's performance in it. Uh, this little mask person, I'm not going to say who it is, uh, is kind of creepy, and it's it's pretty cool. Nice black and white little thriller. Uh, if you like Psycho, this is a, you know, a B-movie knockoff, but it's a it's a pretty good one. Uh, really fun to watch. Um, not long, it's 81 minutes. Check it out. Double feature it with something, but Paranoia, pretty cool, pretty cool from uh, Shout Factory. I believe it is out next week. Next up, I have, I believe it came out, comes out, came out this week, I think, or next week. No, it's this week. Sorry. Uh, speaking of Psycho Hitchcock, uh, Stage Fright. This is one of his underseen ones, not as appreciated ones. I think it's better than its reputation, though not some masterpiece. It still hangs in the middle of the pack. Uh, this one has a lot of nifty little camera tricks and explorations they do. There's a making of, which talks about things. Uh, I talk about it on next week's episode of the show. And so if you listen to the podcast and want more about it, there's there. My review is up already. Um, but basically, I think the thing that this got dinged for back in the day by Hitchcock himself, even, um, I don't think it plays like that today. I think it's forgivable or we've seen enough things like it. Um, based was around an unreliable narrator type thing. This was one of the first kinds to do it. It was considered a cheat or something back then. I think we accept that kind of thing now. So... Um, I don't want to spoil it in case you haven't seen this really old film because it's not seen Hitchcock, but there's something to do with that. But um, this is a great release. It looks wonderful. Uh, some of the camera tricks come a little more apparent, but it's fun that way. It's fun in a, in a good way. Uh, but yeah, stage fright. So now that means for Warner Brothers, all we need is Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and we have all his U.S. output of movies out on Blu-ray. Very exciting. So it's on you, Warner Archive. Maybe one of these coming months, we will get Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, next up from Warner Archive, I have Song of the Thin Man. This is the final film in the Thin Man series. There's also a TV show. Um, hopefully now I kind of want them to just release a set of these, all these in one. Now that they're out, maybe that'll be next year. But they march through the Thin Man series like they do uh, Michael Curtiz films. So he's got one coming out in March again. But here you are, it is Song of the Thin Man, complete your Thin Man collection this month on Warner Archives. Okay, now we're going to move into some interesting things here. Um, first off, didn't expect this today. I don't review quite Criterion titles. I'd love to, be awesome. But uh, I got the piano today, uh, 4K Ultra HD. This comes out, I believe, on Tuesday or something. Did it come out hmm, this week? I can't remember. Maybe it came out this week and I'm I'm screwing this up. But uh, the piano, uh, this one is 4K Ultra HD. I don't think Criterion's ever put it out before, but it comes with the Blu-ray and it comes with 4K. Not too much back there to show you. Uh, this is the Academy, of course, the Academy Award-winning film. Um, have you seen Jane Campion's uh, Power of the Dog yet? It's on Netflix. It's pretty rad. You should check it out. So here we are. And of course, it comes with one of these like full out things the essay, photos, 
piano with Harvey Keitel. There's just words back there, and I'm not going to hold it up. If you want it, buy it, read it. It's great. Uh, very excited to pop this one in. Hopefully, maybe this weekend I can get a chance to, to check it out. I uh, haven't seen this one in a long time, but I'm loving Criterion's picks. So far, I have all their 4Ks, except I don't have Menace to Society yet. I need to grab Menace to Society. I'm trying to keep up with Criterion this time. I didn't when Blu-ray came out because I worked on Criterion titles and testing, and I was like, oh, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Now I'm like, I, I'm going to keep up. I'm going to try to keep up. But so far, liking what they're doing, and they're not putting out 80 of them a month. So like the pace. Next, uh, from Criterion, we have The Beatles, Hard Day's Night. Pretty exciting. Though it's kind of weird, kind of weird what they're doing here. Uh, they've already released it. They did this on Blu-ray, but it's kind of confusing because, like, here's the Blu-ray. Here's the 4K. Oh, man, they're just the same. Uh, and then, but you can see one's thicker, but they are, like, identical releases. It's kind of confusing. I don't know why they didn't change up the cover a bit. They did the same thing here with the red shoes. Which one's which, huh? Which one's which? Like, this is the standard Blu-ray, because I can see on the little fine print in the back, this is the 4K. But yeah, remember the red shoes? Yeah, like, they're pretty close. Like, you could accidentally grab the wrong one. Dangerous game you're playing, Criterion. A dangerous game. But let's take a look at Hard Day's Night, which I sadly have not got to pop in yet. Uh, the ones I buy on my own, like, I <laughs> takes a sec to get to. But uh, here we are. It's the Beatles. This is one of the finest films. This is the first, like, it's like a music video of a film, but this movie's just goofy, fun. Get to watch the Beatles playing around, um, doing jokes, doing songs. Um, it rules. Um, I actually, a uh, fun story, when we did, uh, when the lockdown and the quarantine stuff first started happening, um, and everything was shut down and figuring like, oh, what are we going to do? For, we have to be at home all the time. I decided to do like a, a film festival for my, my kids, my family, my wife, where I programmed like five movies to watch throughout the day. And I had a snack with them. I made tickets, a poster with times on it and stuff. First movie was A Hard Day's Night that I showed. And um, get this wonderful book, which probably matches the other one. Um, and uh, I, it was a gamble. I was like, I know they like the Beatles music and stuff, but are they gonna, are they gonna like, like what you know, this is? And they loved it. They loved this movie. They've watched it a couple times. They, they thought it was rad. So it works. It's generation free. Or maybe I just have cool weird kids. But yeah, they they really enjoyed the movie. They talk about how the Beatles behaved in it and stuff really cool I excited to go back and watch this one again as always um richard lester did something special with this one i know all you comic book nerds are gonna get mad at him about superman stuff but he gets a lifetime pass for hard day's night as well as three musketeers the guy they, believe me folks actors writers directors producers and stuff they do stuff other than superhero movies and it's usually better and that's why they get these jobs is what they do don't just diss them because they made a superhero movie you didn't enjoy. Like, they did good stuff. Like, poor Joel Schumacher. He's got good movies out there. But, like, sorry. He made, he he swung and missed once. Or, you know, like, I know that's what matters to you guys. But, trust me, filmmakers, watch their other stuff. Go see, like, many people crying about Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man now when they didn't go to his movies. You aren't going to his other movies either. You like him so much. Go check out Silence, The Social Network. Go, He's in a lot of good stuff. So check him out. Um, that Silver Lake movie. That's a cool one. Check him out. Seriously. Give things a chance. Seek outside that realm. You'll be very happy. Also, so to end this, we got more Beatles. And I, when they first announced this set, I was like, yeah. but then i holding it very happy with it um it's the beatles get back uh, did not not 4k ultra hd it is a, a standard blu-ray uh, it's the peter jackson um look at the let it be um all the footage he went through um this is a really nice super hard case uh, you go like that and it opens so i got so 
opens this gift bag. We open here, okay. Um, there's the, that's how the disc come. But it looks and sounds, for, so this is coming from the Disney side of things, but uh, the Atmos track, trust me, Atmos track is quite good. I listened, I watched a bunch of it last night. There's the calendar. Um, we have, here we go. I'll show you the discs. I think they're all, it'll be all the same. So here's get back part one. So this is, then, you know, the cliffhanger, George quits. Here we go, get back part two where they change studios. And then part three on the rooftop. The rooftop is one chapter. They they make you have, watch that whole thing. But um, this documentary is fantastic. It's the greatest fly on a wall experience. Just watching how <clears throat> watching how the soup is made. It comes with these pictures. There is no bonus features, though I argue the movie itself is one six hour bonus feature, but I would have liked to seen something uh, regarding Jackson's restoration and choices of what to show and what had to cut and stuff. But um, it is what it is, but I'm really happy with this release. And uh, like, I, I got this and I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. This is really cool, a nice collector's item. Um, Let It Be also had a big, the original film that was the much condensed version of this uh, had a release this year, uh, last year as well. So uh, this is very, very cool. Um, I recommend any Beatles fan or just people because I know, I just feel that Disney Plus is not going to keep this on there forever. They're not going to like, I mean, it's Disney. There's a lot of cigarette smoking. They're not going to like that. There's some choice language some maybe some sexual stuff. They're not going to like that. I don't think it's going to be on Disney Plus forever. I'll eat crow if it is, but I'm happy to have this to reach to watch because it's just fascinating. And it's just watching like Paul McCartney come up with Get Back from scratch. It's random. It's amazing. Just hearing the Abbey Road tunes in their early stages towards the end of this thing. Very cool. Um, I'd love to see it for every album of theirs. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. But uh, I believe Stephen Chapansky, who... Um, guest of the show runs right Free Scarrow. he's a big fan of on the doctor who blu-rays there's the raw studio footage of shooting doctor who which is basically like this he called this raw studio footage the movie and he's right like this is you know when you watch doctor who and they're taking notes about the set and stuff same thing here but it's the beatles and it's awesome so that completes this 4k blues day this impromptu one that happened this week i appreciate you checking in uh, looking at it, I wouldn't plan on doing one this week, but I had plenty of stuff. I was ready to go. Uh, hope you're having a great week. Uh, I'll be back next week. I don't know if there's going to be a 4K Blues Day now that I went through things. I got two things uh, on the way, but I don't know if they'll be here. And I don't know if they'll make for a, a big old episode. But hey, cool stuff, cool stuff. Uh, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you have a good end to your week tomorrow. And if you're watching this weekend, hope your weekend's awesome. If you're watching this next week, hope you're in the middle of the next week. If you're watching it next year, hey, cool, thanks. Uh, but as always, folks, stay film positive. Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Olsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at brandonpetershow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at brandonpetershow.com. show is available on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found.